Coming up on Ann Arbor tonight, we have an amazing show for you this evening. Ann Arbor's own Michigan man, Tom Eufer, is in the house. That's right. All right. That's right. We have amazing comic talent of Randy Alexander. Yes. And Ann Arbor's own musical arranger, DJ Cataclysmic, is here. Yes. Great show for you this evening. Great show. You know, people are always telling me, they said, Zach, you got to keep your nose to the grindstone. And I said, yeah, but, you know, I'm afraid. Won't that mess up my face? <laughs> yeah, you know, I told you guys uh, recently about my friend that joined a gym in Ann Arbor. You know, and I like to work out in the morning. Well, that's because training in the morning makes you feel better in the long run. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, did you hear about the dentist uh, that was in court recently? Yeah, that's right. You know, he was orally examined by the uh, defense for four hours. I mean, can you believe that, guys? Four hours. Yeah. And, of course, they asked the lawyers afterwards. They said, well, why did you do that? And the lawyer simply said, well, look, we were just trying to extract the truth. What's the big deal? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was with some friends uh, recently, and believe it or not, guys, we played a game uh, of Hangman. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that's a guy that works under a deadline, am I right? <laughs> yeah. You know, I was in Ann Arbor recently, and this was very interesting. There was a sign hanging uh, in the window of a laundromat. Yeah, that's right. And it said, so-and-so dry cleaners working on the same spot for 20 years. <laughs> yeah. You know, Nike has backed down and apologized for not anticipating the intense anger of fans. Yeah, that's right. They announced this week that they're no longer going to be making Lions gear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. They, they weren't sure. Yeah. You know, before Ann Arbor tonight, did you guys know this? I actually applied for a job as a weatherman. But you see, my knowledge of meteorology was a bit cloudy. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we have a great show for you this evening, folks. So please stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome back to Ann Arbor tonight. Thank you so much folks. I am thrilled to introduce our feature interview guest for the evening. Please welcome the amazing Tom Eufer. Zach, how you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. So uh, thanks for being on the show tonight. We appreciate you stopping by. Always a pleasure. All Anything right. that, to help uh, friends of my daughter Brooke and Tara, the old <laughs> pioneer days, I'm, I'm here to help. Thank you so much Ann Arbor tonight, Ann Arbor's late night show. This is so much fun. But can we jump in? Do you mind? Let's go. All right. So first, you're very active, Tom, in the Ann Arbor community uh, uh, through your efforts with the Bob Eufer Foundation. And it funds scholarships uh, to local high school students. Now, in your opinion, why is the Bob Eufer Foundation uh, important? Zach, it's our way as our, the Eufer family. Dad passed away, hard to believe, October 26th, back in 1981. 37 years ago next month, Dad passed away. And a lot of people gave a lot of money, and what we decided to do, we wanted some way to kind of play it forward with the people in Ann Arbor. So we set up both the Bob Eufer Foundation and Bob Eufer Scholarship Fund. Over the last 36 years, we've given roughly 153 scholarships to the top student athletes and Pioneer, Huron, and Skyline who are going on to Michigan. Wow, 153, you said? Every May, the uh, principal and the athletic director send us a top three to five student athletes okay. who are going to Michigan. We as a family interview the kids and uh, give the scholarships. And so, it's a wonderful way, again, for us to be touching the community mm -hmm. and really to be giving back to the young people of Ann Arbor who've worked awfully hard to have a chance to go to Michigan. Wow. I mean, just an amazing thing you're doing, to, again, to pay it forward and be a, a, a vital thread in the fabric uh, of this Ann Arbor community. So thank you for that. Our pleasure. Uh, and also, I wanted to touch on this, too, because as you know, uh, your dad, Bob Eufer, is considered the original voice of Michigan football. Good afternoon, football fans. That's right. 
This has been my home away from home, a Michigan broadcasting booth for the past 31 years, every single Saturday all fall long. And you know, I can honestly say that I've enjoyed every cotton-picking moment of every single ball game. Bob Eufer is a University of Michigan icon for nearly four decades. And, you know, he was loved and followed uh, by a wide range of listeners for his enthusiastic, articulate, an engaging style of broadcast. Bo Schembechler, and what a fantastic job Bo's done for Michigan over the last seven seasons. He's done just about everything. Twelve All-Americans. He won the Big Ten Championship outright in 1971. He defended it successfully in 72, 73, last year in 74. And if Bo Schembechler in Michigan beat Ohio State next Saturday, right here on this Canham's carpet, it'll be the fifth Big Ten Championship in a row for Michigan. No other school, no other coach in the history, the 79-year history of the Big Ten, has ever accomplished a feat like that. And how can we ever forget some of those Michigan-Ohio State clashes over the last four, five, and six years. Four years ago in 1971, remember Dana Coyne's field goal was good as gold, three to nothing Michigan, until Campana, the Ohio State safety man, brought a Michigan punt back 85 yards, and Ohio State led at that point seven to three. And then with two and a half minutes remaining in the fourth and final quarter, I can see it yet, yeah, Michigan had the ball right down here at the southern end of the field on the Buckeye 21-yard line. Michigan broke out of the huddle with a balanced line, Bo rather spent wide to the right. It was Billy Taylor deep, Fritz Seifert close, and Larry Sipp under center, sip up the snap, rolled out, pitched off to Billy Taylor, Bo Rather got the linebacker, Fritz Saufried, low and Campana at the 10-yard line, and Billy Taylor was down to the 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, touchdown, Billy Taylor. And his high-octane uh, style had an impact on many, and of course, as you touched on it, now 37 years after his passing, I'd like to touch on this project because you're now releasing uh, a film, which is titled Football's Valhalla, the Bob Eufer story which gives a great background on Bob Eufer's life story, and that'll be uh, released soon. And I wanted to know from you, how did the idea for the film come about? The idea, I met a gentleman about five years ago. He did at the time the Billy Taylor Perseverance DVD about Billy Taylor's career. Sure. This guy came to the Eufer family, our family, about three and a half years ago, and he said, guys, I'd love to do a documentary on your dad. Sure. We said, Dan, again, what's the storyline? I mean, he loved Michigan passion, really love life. Yeah. Uh, he goes, you know what, let me run with this thing and we'll see how it plays out. And this thing, he's interviewed roughly 40 to 45 people, the Harbaugh's, the Johnny Wanglers, Billy Taylor's, Dennis Franklin's, uh, Dan Deardorff's, uh, Frank Beckman's, Paul W. Smith, all the local Michigan people, sure. along with other people that Dad knew growing up. And he's come together and it's, it's turned out to be one heck of a DVD. And uh, we're very proud of it. And just again, talking about Michigan and Dad's passion, ironically, my grandparents, his mom and dad graduated from Michigan back in 1917. 1917. So you have 101 years of kind of the Eufer stream sure. through this thing called the University of Michigan, and as Dad would call it, Little Ann Arbor Town. My go. mom and my dad, my aunts, my uncles, everybody went to Michigan. So okay. there's, we have some history, and uh, this whole thing has turned out quite well with the DVD. That is amazing, and of course, really touches on, uh, again, the history uh, of the fact that he was an All-American uh, track athlete. He had a well. world record. Wow. He had a world record yeah. in 1942, Zach. He ran a 48-1 indoor quarter wow. on the boards at Madison Square Garden. Oh, my goodness. Interesting thing. Dad comes in here in the early 1940s. He led the state of Pennsylvania in scoring in football. Okay. So he comes to Michigan, to, does a year of post-grad year of prep school, comes to Michigan in the early 40s, sure. plays freshman ball. Freshman can't play varsity football. Okay. So he plays freshman ball, and they said, Eufer, you got to give up football because you're going to risk injuring your legs. Huh. So he went on freshman year, and he set all the varsity records in track, 100-yard dash, 200-yard dash, 440, 800 meters. So four varsity records his freshman year. He ends up running Boston Gardens, L.A. Coliseum, New York Madison Square Gardens, and he ends up, and again, in the 1942, 48-1 indoor quarter mile, four-year world record, 37-year Michigan varsity record. Wow. So he not only was a heck of a broadcaster, right. he's a hell of an athlete. Too. That's right. So That's right. Some and fun I, history. Oh, a absolutely. Fun history, great tradition. And I think what's amazing about you, Tom, is you have understood the importance of that and the importance of being able to educate the younger generations of alumnus and, of course, students that are coming uh, to the university uh, to know that tradition. And that's what I think is great 
uh, about this film? Well, we are very blessed in that we're able to do that as a family, but I mean, education is the key to the whole thing. And Scott Hurth, who owns the MDEN in town, he's done a wonderful job in regards to selling a lot of the CDs. We put four or five CDs out, which you can see here, in the early to mid-1990s. And that has helped us. Again, we've raised roughly $1.9 million wow. that we put into scholarships and allows us to do what we're doing when we give anywhere from 8 to 12 of these scholarships every year to the local kids going to Michigan. That is amazing. And you talked about the CDs. Can you talk about this final record we've got here? Final record, it's, which is kind of <laughs> coming back into vogue. This is kind of there fun. Dad in the late 1970s put together a couple of vinyl records of a bunch of highlights. Okay. I was fortunate, uh, graduating in 1977, I was up in the box for four years with Dad as a spotter. Okay. So as Dad got going in his gyrations and going off into different tangents, 37 years ago in sure. the northern end zone, Michigan Trail, Ohio State, blah, blah, blah. Right. Somebody's got to be watching the field while Dad's going. And That's you're right. pointing, you know, who tipped what ball, who made what fumble, yep. who made the interception in regards to you got to keep him fluid when he would look down. So the right. spotter, I was able to do that for the four and a half years before he passed away, and uh, some wonderful memories with that. How loud it was that General Patton horn? The General George Bull Patton Schimbecker horn, Zach, was loud. <laughs> I bet. What he actually did was kind of cute. In the mid-1970s, he gets a phone call, because at the time, Dad's on WJR, 50,000-watt okay. station that blanketed the whole Midwest. So he gets a call from Patton's nephew over in Chicago. He goes, hey, Mr. Eufer, avid Michigan fan, I listened to you in the fall on Saturdays. I've got my uncle, Patton, George Patton, will to me the horn from his Jeep from World War II. Right. Would you like to have that for your broadcast? Well, Zach, Dan goes, you know, is the sky, is the sky blue? Is the grass green sun? Send it <laughs> over. Right. So what Dan did, he had the mic off of his glasses. Then he had another microphone off the desk in the broadcast booth, and he had it wired into, so he had the horn, and he had it wired up, so every time Michigan scored, nice and loud, right into the mic off the broadcasting table, <laughs> while he could keep going off the mic off his mouth, and uh, wow. the rest is history. Yeah, unbelievable. I mean, you know, when you hear a broadcast, that sound uh, is intertwined with uh, the sound of Bob Eufer, and amazing story. Thank you for sharing that. You've been known to say, by the way, uh, and, I, and I love this about you, because you've said it many times when you and I have had conversations, you believe in the philosophy, think positive thoughts. Now, why is a positive mind frame, in your opinion, why is that important? Zach, you gotta be okay in your own skin before you can go out and be positive with other people. You know, you get up in the morning, is it partially cloudy, is it partially sunny? What is it? Your call. Mm -hmm. I can be happy today, I'm gonna be upset today. Right. Your call. I don't like being around negative people. My call. Right. So as you get older, I will, you know, it's one of those things you can be around a person one time, but I'm not around the second time. Right. So why not look for the positive in life? Dad was very into being positive. Look for the positive. Sure. Everybody has challenges. There's no, I mean, I tell my daughters and my stepsons, I don't care how big the house is, when that front door closes at night, every single family in the world has challenges. Mm. If they don't want to admit to it, they're lying through their teeth. Yep. So again, you do the best you can do with what God gave you. Mm. And that really is the way I like to play it and how I feel about things. Wow, I mean, I think that is an amazing philosophy. And, I, and I've got to say, I agree with you on that. I think when you are positive, people feel that, they react to it, and that creates a good positive connection. Zach, it, again, real simple, you keep it positive, And again, we all have challenges. And that's what people, all of us have challenges. You accept that, you go forward. Well, and I wanted to ask you too, having such a you know tradition of you know growing up in Ann Arbor, being here, being an Ann Arborite, for those watching that have never visited Ann Arbor, why should they come to Ann Arbor? Why should they come to Ann Arbor? The change of seasons, number one. The, the location in <laughs> southern Michigan. I just look at the thing where I love a college town. 63-year-old guy, it keeps you young. Yeah. When you go up and down South U in the fall, yep. in the spring, you've got kids rushing into the fraternities, rushing into the sororities. Yeah. You go back to memories of yesteryear. Culturally, there's unbelievable things that come through town. 25 minutes from one of the top five airports in the world. I love Michigan. I love Ann Arbor in particular. That's right. And I, I couldn't agree more. You know, Ann Arbor has such a unique energy and a specific beat 
uh, than many different cities. And, you know, I think it's interesting because I find that it's a city that, you know, once you've been here, uh, it's always a part of you, no matter where you go. Wonderful memories. And that's where we sold. I mean, the MDN sold a couple thousand CDs last year. Dad's been gone, as I said, 37 years. But the people come back over age 40, and they bring, they bring the kids back to a ball game. Sure. And they share about the memories from the 1960s, the 1970s, the 1980s. All positive. I mean, Dad talked about to, the, to all of it, to my siblings, you know, you really try to create positive memories in life. Yep. And at the end of the game, at your funeral, if you got five true friends, you know, that really you've succeeded. Mm. But you go back to those positive memories and that back to a positive attitude. That's right. Well, and I, I wanted to ask you too, because, you know, you talked a lot about how important attitude is. And it's really impacted me in my time, you know, getting to know you and, and the times that we've talked. But for all the young people out there, uh, those freshmen that are sitting in their dorms right now, it's their first time in college, it's their, you know, third week of classes. Uh, what do you have to say to them in terms of, you know, words of advice? You work hard, you play hard, and again, you go with uh, what God gave you and that you, you do the best you can do. And when you learn, when you you know screw up a test or have a bad challenge that day, learn from it. Prepare a little bit more the next time. Mm -hmm. And that really, and they're very blessed of us sitting here in Ann Arbor on campus because they worked their fanny off in high school to have an opportunity to go here. There we go. And I I couldn't agree more. You know I think you've got to embrace it. You've got to enjoy being the moment. But at the same time, you know have that positive focus. Last question for you, yes. Tom. Favorite band? What do you listen to? Favorite band? You're going to ask a 63-year-old favorite band? I am. How does Elton John? How about James Taylor? How about how, how about Billy Joel? I'm an there old man. I'm got, a huge Billy Joel fan. I got those maize and blue spots in front of me. No, I like music, but I like laid-back music. There we go. You guys rapping and you know, all this. I can't. Yeah, 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 anyway. No, that's great. Hey, Tom. Beautiful question, Zach. Beautiful question. Thank you so much. Well, Tom, this has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining Ann Arbor tonight. Let's have you back. We will try that, and I really appreciate your time, and uh, thank you for inviting me in. All right, no problem. Thank you so much, folks. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Ann Arbor tonight. <music> and welcome back to Ann Arbor tonight. I am so excited to introduce our comic guest for the evening. Please put your hands together for Brandy Alexander. Thank you, thank you so much, that's sweet. I am Brandy Alexander, I'm from Ann Arbor. I love being in a college town because my dating life is fantastic. I date a lot of college professors. <laughs> well, they ain't hard to find. <laughs> Every now and then, when I'm desperate, I will date a college boy. <laughs> but I have to be desperate. I mean, my funds have to be very low to do that. But I tell you, I am a little depressed, people, because at my age, I still have to go on dates to make ends meet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tragedy. It's a tragedy. And these young boys, I mean, they want you to work too hard <laughs> for a little bit of money. These young boys, they want you to pop, lock, drop, do the splits. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute here. You want me to do all of that in this twin bed? <laughs> He got me in the twin bunk bed in the dorm room. <laughs> Ain't no guard room. 
Where the bed sheet at? <laughs> I'm sticking the plastic. The hardest part is getting up to that top bunk without waking up his roommate. <laughs> Got me in the twin bunk bed. It's just too small. It's too narrow. I mean, every position we have to be on our side. <laughs> or else my knees are caught between my chest and the ceiling. Okay? I done cut up both my kneecaps <laughs> on that bumpy doggone popcorn ceiling in Angel Hall. <laughs> I'm bleeding to death. And this fool, he's talking about he wants to cuddle. <laughs> it's too small. It ain't enough room. Every weekend, you know, I try to make a slight move, just turn a little bit to remember who I'm with. <laughs> And every weekend, never fails, I tumble out that top bunk, <laughs> crash to the floor, hurt myself, crunch up about 72 cases of ramen noodles. Because <laughs> I stays for dinner. <laughs> I'm going to eat. At least he can do is feed me, right? So every weekend, I'm in the dormitory, bleeding, limping, trying to sneak out the dorm past the RA. <laughs> I never make it. I break up every beer pong game. <laughs> I hear the young people laughing at me. They giggling and they talking about me. I hear them. Help, call campus police. Somebody's grandma's in the hallway, heard AF. <laughs> college boys. You know, it's interesting because I meet a lot of these young boys down in Detroit, down in the city of Detroit. But a lot of universities, a lot of colleges are investing big bucks into urban farming. Urban farming. I got to tell you, it looks very suspicious to me, okay? You're tearing down people's homes and planting fields that look a lot like plantation, <laughs> okay? And I can tell you, it's scaring black people half to death. <laughs> All these young white college kids walking around the city of Detroit carrying gardening tools, <laughs> knocking on black people's doors, introducing themselves, talking about they in the master's program? Oh, no. no, no, that's a trigger word. That's a trigger word. And it don't help they coming from the Belle Isle Renaissance Festival, you know? <laughs> they got on the whole Viking ensemble. Helmet swords, all that. Wheelbarrows full of starter plants. They got bok choy, zucchini. We don't even eat that nasty junk. <laughs> college boys. You know, I have to tell you, when I deal with these college boys, I, I, in the back of my mind, I think as soon as I get a car, I won't have to go on these dates. I just need a car. I don't have a car right now. But I'm kind of glad because I was in a difficult relationship with my GPS. We're in counseling. <laughs> because I couldn't figure it out. How am I supposed to look at the GPS, the road, the sign, GPS, road, and sign all at the same time? To me, that's distracted driving. <laughs> to me, it is. I'm already trying to change the song on the iPod, pop a pimple, outrun the police, <laughs> and rolling something, <laughs> playing Candy Crush and Angry Birds. I ain't got time to be looking at no GPS. <laughs> Distracted driving. <laughs> and now the Xfinity Comcast cable people, they done made it so I can watch TV on my phone. I can watch my favorite TV shows on my phone. Shoot, I'm driving during commercial breaks only. <laughs> Ain't got time for no GPS or no stop sign either. <laughs> but I did figure out how to put my GPS on audio setting, you know, verbal directions. So all you got to do is listen. My GPS told me, your next turn is 0 0.43 miles. Mm -mm. Nope. <laughs> I do not know how far it is. 
I, I don't know how far that is. <laughs> <laughs> or my GPS will tell me, go northeast on State Street. Go northeast. <laughs> go northeast. Give me some directions in the present time. <laughs> Not no 1857 wagon train directions. <laughs> I ain't on my way to Vaudeville. All right, give me some landmarks. Better yet, find me a GPS that speaks Ebonics. <laughs> How about that? But our therapist, he told me, Brandy, you don't need a new GPS. No. You just need to set your GPS on the Sequita setting. <laughs> Go northeast on State Street. Boop, 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 boop. Dummy, turn right. <laughs> Put your stupid self. You're going to see a big, broad, tall, broad, bright red hair, two ponytails, bunch of freckles. That heifer, her name is Wendy's. <laughs> you turn right there. Thank you all. That is my set. <laughs> I really appreciate it. I am your girl, Brandi Alexander. Thank you so much. Thank you. Stop doesn't mean kind of stop. It means stop all the way, period. Look, cross, live. It's common sense. Use the crosswalks. Stand out and stay alive. Day or night, wear something bright. Don't walk means don't walk. Come on, you're smarter than that. Bus, then stop. See a bus, see a sign, then stop. Phone down, heads up. Dying to respond, don't, it can wait. A2 be safe. A2 be safe. A2 be safe. Everywhere. Everyone. Every day. All right, Brandy Alexander, everybody, Thank welcome you. back. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, my God. Thank you. Man, funny, funny stuff, Brandy. I mean, always. <laughs> Thank you so much. And that so smile, much. my goodness, my goodness. It's worth quite a penny, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you do a lot of great things in Ann Arbor. I mean, you MC all the time at the Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase, yes, I and do. I really enjoy seeing you. And then you brought your wonderful you know, comedy for us tonight. Yes. But, you know, now you're on this tip of, like, you always have to sell stuff, right? Yes. So, I mean, what, you know, talk about for you, do you remember that moment when you first got into comedy and you said, okay, I'm going to take that plunge? Well, I needed something for therapy. You know, I'm, I'm in education, public education, and it was very depressing. Mm. So I needed something for therapy, so I went to Mark Ridley's okay. and took a class, and the teacher was like, once you take this class and do that class performance, you're going to be hooked, and he's telling the truth. And so it's been about six years. My goodness. Yes, I love it. Now, does it feel like six? No, it doesn't feel like six because, you know, you inch so slowly, it feels like a hundred <laughs> years, yeah, you know, 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 to get five minutes. That's you right. Know, so it feels like a long time. It does yes. feel like a long time. But you love every minute of it. You learn yes. from every minute of it, right? I do love every minute of it. I especially love when it's difficult. Uh, you know, I really? love the. I love it, it wow. because it's a challenge. You know, I remember when I first started, I was scared to touch the microphone. Were you really? I was scared. <laughs> I said, I'm not touching that thing. Huh. I'm not touching it. And sometimes I go up there, it'll be too low. It didn't matter. I just said, I'm bending over low. <laughs> you just bent yeah, out there. If it's too tall, I just talk, I, but I wasn't touching it. Huh. So, you know, I've learned now to deal with a microphone. Yep. And, so it's been a very long process. Sure. You know? Now, how do you, I mean, because co comedy, right, it's observation mostly, yes. right? So where do you get your ideas? Is it mostly from work? No, it's not from work because I was trying to get away from my job. Okay. So I didn't want to talk about my job on stage. <laughs> right. I just, you know, I'm but, a teacher by day. Sure. I am a prostitute by night. I wanted to just live <laughs> a totally different life. Of course, totally normal. Totally different. So yeah. none of my jokes come from my job. Okay. I'm just corny and goofy. And I just, you know, <laughs> like one time I remember going to this comedy club in Bowling Green. It's okay. a college town. Okay. And all the young boys was hitting on me. Wow. You know, and I was like, I said, let me reverse it. I said, you know, if you have a little money, you know, I'll give you a little time. And sure. so that just developed into me talking about, you know, 
Yeah. Going on dates sure. with college boys. <laughs> yeah. And I just ran with it. Hey, man, sometimes age is just a number, you know? Hey. Yes. Right? Uh, especially when it's a money number. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I mean, Brandy, but you know, what I think is amazing, too, is that you, you just have such a presence, doesn't you guys? I mean, on stage, if you say you're just so. so yeah. Well, I'm a teacher. You better have a presence when you're a teacher. That's you know, right. I have to get the attention from the cell phones, right. you know. Right. So I think you need one if you're in education. That's right. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I mean, I don't have the patience for that. Like, if kids weren't listening to me, I'd be like, you know what? You know, ah. I was talking to another educator, your mama. Oh, okay. And she was talking about how she like young kids, and yeah. I like them. High school, I like 11th, 12th graders. Those are the really? ones I do best with. Yeah. Wow. Bad kids. <laughs> okay. Yes, those are the ones I do best with. Oh my goodness, <laughs> man. Well, you know, again, I really admire you for doing that because I think teaching and educators they don't get enough, you know, of that appreciation. Do you agree with that? Money. Yes. <laughs> I should have to sell my goods. Right. On the side. You know, right. I should be paid enough during the day. Right. And no, you don't get enough pay and you don't get respect because, mm. you know, decisions are made from the top down. They never ask the teachers. Okay. So it's, and it's very political. You thought, you really? know, it's just about kids and education. Right. It has nothing to do with that. So huh. that was very hard to learn, wow. which meant I needed to do something therapeutic. So I ran to comedy. There we go. You taught at Pioneer High School. Yes. The Amazing. Talk. Eastern, Pioneer, yep. Ipsy, Japan, wow. Cuba. I teach all over. Wow. That's the, I can do two things well. Okay. You know, and that's my day job and my night job. There we go. <laughs> now, Brandy, um, what was it that sort of, you know, attracted you to the Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase stage? And, and how do you like that stage? Well, I am totally in love with Roger, <laughs> and he loves me. Yeah. I like it because it really is like a college. Mm -hmm. You know, Roger doesn't say much, but he gives you little tools to sure. get better. So the first thing I remember him telling me is you have to stop being nervous. You have to be comfortable. Sure. Then he said you have to write and be funny, take the cuss words out, don't have any gimmicks, just write and be funny. Got it. And, you know, he has just been really like someone who's been a teacher to me. Yeah. And he's really trying to bring women to the stage. You know, it's not a lot of women. So, mm. and I can ride my bike to the club because I only live a mile away. There you go. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> well, Brandy, for those that want to come see you uh, at the Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase or at Mark Ridley's yes. in Royal Oak, great club, uh, how can they uh, find you, keep track of you, knowing you're well, performing? I have Facebook, okay. Brandy Alexander, but I'm pretty much at Ann Arbor every week. There we go. And every now and then at Mark Ridley's. I love both the clubs. They've both been wonderful for yeah. my career. Oh, but just hit me up on Facebook. You know how they say that. DM me. There, okay, DM mm -hmm. you. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, DM Brandy, and make sure you check her out at the Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase or at Mark Ridley's in Royal Oak. She is a treat. Thank you so much, thank Brandy, for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, and let's have you again. All right, thank you. I'll be back. All right, sounds great. All right, folks, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Ann Arbor Tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and give a warm Ann Arbor Tonight welcome for the one, the only, DJ Cataclysmic. Let's get started. You may learn something. What's on your mind?
If my pages get dark, they say I'm somewhere in between. Crazy incorrect, but crazy intellect, black supreme being. You can say I got the genius genius, super clean. You can say I sip the Jesus juice without the lean. You can say I got the juice, cause I do my thing. They say that it's a waste of time to try to MC, but they live asleep. They ain't waking up to chase a dream. And I'm super low key up on the scene. Still my name ring, and I know it seems like I ain't dropped the gem since Buddy Lee was rocking dungarees. Can't bust them. And sometimes that's how it's gotta be when your brain is on E. I ain't talking ecstasy, I mean empty as a black hole and depression hit a new low. I let my soul glow in the session. It's a blessing to watch it grow. I had to go learn a few lessons about how to get this going. Keep it mind, patience is a weakness. No occupation being the reason my pockets is leaking. But I'm self employed on the weekends. Bring the beats to the bars when you drinking. Waking up when I'm dreaming, thinking it's never enough. I wanna quit and give up, but I regret it forever. You know, I always feel like I'm stuck. It's intuition, not luck, and I ain't preaching at all. I'm just trying to share a new, different perspective with y'all. Word, something like you never seen. And if my pages can talk, they say I'm somewhere in between. Crazy incorrect with crazy intellect, black supreme being. You can say I got the genius genes, super clean. Don't be a super fiend looking through the future screen. I got the future on lock, cause I do my thing. They said that it's a waste of time to try to MC, but they live asleep. They ain't waking up to chase a dream. That's the irony in the game. Everybody lives in fear just so they can maintain or understand it. I don't blame you. I used to be ashamed to admit that I don't have a job because I would either quit or get fired. Really starting getting tired of the service industry. None of it appeals to me realistically. No disrespect to all my people working in the restaurants who have to make those ends meet. Lucky as leprechauns to have an occupation. But what's the job to a career? Never had the patience for the same old mediocre kind of lifestyle. Nine to five grind day in, day out. Always getting home at the same time with a slight frown. Cause I want more for myself, knowing that life is too short. So I just do what I really love and it never for force. And that's a natural reaction for being allowed with my course, of course. Something like you've never seen. And if my pages get talk, they say I'm somewhere in between. Crazy incorrect with crazy intellect. Black supreme. You can say I got the genius genes, super clean. You can say I sip the Jesus juice without the lean. You can say I got the juice because I do my thing. They said that it's a waste of time to try to MC, but they live asleep. They ain't waking up to chase a dream. Welcome back, everybody. DJ Cataclysmic, everybody. All right. Man, what a set, bro. What a set. Dude. Thank you. Thank you. My thank goodness. You. Thank Man, you. I mean, it is just so amazing. I mean, you are one of the premier music selectors in the city. Oh, yeah, so right. thank you so much for being on the show, man. Thanks for having me, man. Oh, man. Appreciate it. This is awesome. Ann Arbor tonight, you know, Ann Arbor's late night show. Uh, and, and Ann Arbor right through and through. Let's get it, man. All right. So Let's you don't mind it, if we jump right in, do you? <laughs> Let's, do it. Let's do it. Okay. So, um, what, what first got you interested in music? Though? Man, okay, so ever since I was a kid, I don't even know when the exact moment was, but I just remember my grandparents and my parents always playing like like oldies and and uh, soul music, you know, like OJ's Temptations and Supremes. Uh, dramatics, stuff like that. Like, and they had records and just music scattered all over the place all right, the time. Right. And the, every weekend or Saturday, Sunday, they would just play. They would blast like Patti LaBelle or you know, you know, something like that, where right. they're just cleaning to. Right. And the older I got, the more I was just like, what is you know, what is, what is this? What, let me, what's up with, let yeah. me dig in this and figure out what, what these songs are about. Right. And then uh, around the time I was a junior. In high school, 
I uh, started going to the Nutrizone, and they had a DJ program. Yeah, right here in Ann Arbor. Yeah, and um, my fr- my good friend Nick Ayers, shout out to Silky Slim, taught me a whole lot about DJing, scratching in particular, and ever since that point, I was obsessed. Like, I heard him do like some patterns on the turntables, and I was like, how do you get that? How do you? Sound? How do you? What? What yeah. is that? Yeah. So yeah, just been obsessed since I was like 16, nice. I guess. No, it's awesome. And I mean, you've you've you know done a lot a lot of great things. I mean, you've in the Super Crew, uh, known as Tree City. Oh yeah. Uh, so shout out to Tree City. Salut, salutes to my guys, Silas right. Green and Evan Haywood. I yeah. see you guys. That's right. And well, yeah, uh, yeah, Silas was I mean, great, great guy. Uh, and just a just a great crew. I mean, raw talent, uh, right here in Ann Arbor. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in your own words, why? You know, do you feel that Ann Arbor uh, is a great place for music? Hmm. There's there's so much. Um, I think there's a lot of different styles that people don't know about, and it's kind of hard to find sometimes. But if you know the right people and know the right spots to go to, there's always like a show where you know there's some obscure artist who you know is playing instruments or you know is a vocalist or has um, just the capacity to like bring people together with the music and I feel like I don't know it's it, there's always something that I didn't know about I feel like there's always like another artist or group that I haven't heard of and I, I'll just like be in a random place and I'll hear them play and it's sure. just like you know super spontaneous like that you never know what you're gonna run into in Ann Arbor yep and there's always like some random you know, unexpected music going on. I sure. don't know. You know what I'm saying? I mean, as a musician, yeah. I mean, as a musician, <coughs> I mean, because I feel this sometimes, right? Like, when I'm downtown and mm-hmm. walking around the city yeah. or whatever. But, like, Ann Arbor has its own beat, man. It does. You know what I mean? It really does. Like, like the vibe in Ann Arbor is, is really not, like, anywhere else. And it's, it's kind of, like, liberating in a sense because everybody's just pretty much carefree most of the time. And it's kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, very accepting, very inclusive. Yeah. You know, and perfect uh, for you know great artists, man. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, Agreed. Can you can you share uh, what your favorite venue to perform in Ann Arbor is and why? Oh man. Uh, I mean, I I would say the Pig because I just right. play there most of the time. The blind Pig. Yeah, I really man. love the Blind Pig. Um, I feel, in my personal opinion, though, it's a toss up between. The Pig and the um, the uh, Michigan Theater. Okay. Cause nice. that place that place is huge, man. Oh yeah. I remember it was like I think it was two thousand and I don't I don't remember. Oh. Okay. I can't remember the date. <laughs> but no, um, that's okay. I mean Michigan Theater. It's a it's like a great venue. I Not love only that is place. it an awesome place to see films and like a premiere movie yeah. palace, but like it's a great place to see music. Man. Yeah. The acoustics in that place are out of sight. Just. Right. Super, super expansive, huge, yeah. and just, I love it. Yeah. I saw Janelle Monet play really? there, like, yeah, it was a while ago, but wow. that, I'll never forget that show. She's Man. so amazing. Well, and spe- I mean, you just opened up for uh, another great Ann Arbor artist, I mean, Mayor Hawthorne. Mayor Hawthorne, yep. Yeah. He was in town on, uh, what was that? It was probably not too long ago. Yeah. But, uh. How was that? Like, that was, you know? I was so nervous that Were day. Were you really? Yes. <laughs> Because, one, I, I wasn't sure of what style of music to play. Because he, he does a mix of, like, it's kind of like R&B with, like, soul put together. Yeah. And I knew, like, I had to place along those lines. But yeah. there was it was a really diverse crowd. And it was hard to know what they wanted to hear. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it turned out pretty good. It went it went really well. He killed it. Yeah, yeah. He, he murdered killed it. it. It was a great show. Yeah. And, um. Because I, I saw you after the show, man. I was like, hey, dude. That was, yep. and, I mean, dude, you, yeah, it was great. And it was, I, I felt like my heart went out to you, man, because I was so proud uh, to just see you, you know, up there and, and perform with Nair Hawthorne and Thanks, doing man. your thing. So, yeah, man, that's awesome. Um, so I wanted to know, too, for all the other artists out there, I mean, Ann Arbor, University of Michigan, great arts community, mm-hmm. what, what advice out there do you have for, like, other artists? <laughs> don't. Don't listen to what people tell you when when it comes to what they think you should play or do always do your own thing 
just keep it original and just stay true to what you feel is your calling you know mm -hmm. like just um how do you say it um go with your gut yeah that's yeah always go with your gut i like that i like that go with your gut all right here's a big one if you could perform with anyone 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 who would it be and why dead or alive dead or alive <sighs> Jimi hendrix for sure Ooh, nice definitely hendrix um yeah. Jaco Pastoris, he's nice. just pff, bass player phenomenon. Right. Thundercat, uh, DJ Craze, Qbert, um, just it's a long list. Yeah, yeah, I, dude, you got like the <laughs> list going. I'm like, dang. It's a but lot, dude, of, Jim, lot of people. Jimmy topping it, and Jimmy actually like he used to play in Ann Arbor. Like when he like was really young. What? Yeah, he would like he would like come and like play, you know, at local teen clubs like way back. I did not uh, know that. Yeah, man. Um, you know, I saw an article about it a couple months ago, and uh, it was crazy, man. So there's just the an amazing, you know. yeah, yeah, like an amazing uh, uh, arts history here too, man. So mm -hmm. um, definitely, man. No, that's great. And uh, for all those watching, um, how can they continue uh, to, like, you know, follow you and see what you're doing? I'm on uh, Instagram, uh, DJ Cataclysmic underscore keep it G, um, Facebook. Snapchat, um, I got a, I got an album on iTunes, nice. Spotify, Tidal, Heck yeah. uh, I think that's it. Okay, man, yeah. uh, really quick, uh, last question, uh, can you, can you share a funny memory, because I mean, you're a performer, right, you travel around, you've been on stage, <laughs> so, can, oh, look, he already, he's already got one, folks, so can you share a funny memory that happened on stage or backstage with us, man? Okay, oh my gosh, so we... <laughs> We were performing with Tree. I was performing with Tree CD, and um, we did a set, and uh, it was at Buttermilk Jamboree okay. Festival. It's in um, oh, where is that place? The name of the town. It's I, I can't remember the name of the town. It's a small town in Michigan. A plan that like uh, a place that likes buttermilk. I, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know if they like buttermilk, but they called it the Buttermilk Jamboree. Oh, okay. But um, we did our thing, got off stage, and. Uh, there were some uh, <laughs> some medicinals in the oh oh in, in the vicinity. Was it like we in were. the air or like what like like? Uh, it was uh it was backstage. So oh, like okay. me and Kyle were you know just hanging out, just cooling after right. the show, and uh, <laughs> he's probably gonna hate me for telling the story. No no no. But Kyle like he uh, he took uh, say he took too much medicine. Oh. And he was we were driving we were driving back to Ann Arbor. And he started swerving. And he was go, driving? Yes. Oh, dude. And he started, oh, like, no. swerving, and he was, like, losing it. I was oh. like, man, you need to pull over. And he was like, okay, I'm just going to I'm just gonna pull over to the side of the road. <laughs> and he gets out and just walks behind the car and just starts vomiting. Oh, like, man. And I was just like, man. That's rough. You need to, you need to lay off the peyote, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you need to lay off the peyote. That's bro. what I told him. I was like, you can't handle it. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not for everybody, but. Man, yeah, you gotta you gotta watch out at those backstage. Yeah, shows, man, it, man. it like, gets it gets heavy sometimes. Yeah, man, <laughs> dang, like that's that's so what? Ha like, did you drive back or like what? No, Evan drove back. Oh, okay. I didn't want to. I didn't want to drive. I wasn't, <laughs> You're I, like I couldn't drive either. Yeah, I, man. I wasn't in a position to do <laughs> oh, so. Oh my goodness, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. I mean, I'm glad you guys made it back safely, and I'm glad you know yeah. everybody's cool now, man. Evan's Evan's I mean, the uh, he was the. Uh, Caretaker, or okay. DD, I guess. Right. I'm gonna call it that. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, doesn't it? That always happens though when like you're not intending to do that, you know, like. Or if you have, if you take too much, or right. or the potency is too high. Right. And it's like, ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Shouldn't have did that. Yeah. No. <laughs> Tough stuff, man. But glad you made it back, and uh, just thank you so much, man, for thank everything. You. Like I said, great set, DJ Cataclysmic, aka. Jacoby Simmons, check him out. SoundCloud, iTunes, check him out. I forgot and, uh, SoundCloud. Yep, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. And um, you know, you, you'll be spinning around, bro. So uh, I will. let's have you back sometime. Please, okay. please, I would love to come back. All right, let's do it again. Sounds good. Well, thank you. And uh, I just want to thank everybody. It's been a great show. I want to thank Alicia. I want to thank Pam. I want to thank all of our crew, Matt, Lana, all the audience for putting up with me tonight. This has been our show. Thank you so much. This is Ann Arbor tonight.